Just Standy, a board game podcast coming to you from four countries across Europe. I'm joined here today by Alexis. Hi, happy holiday. Alessia, four countries across Europe. I'm joined here today by Alexis. Hi, happy holiday. Alessio. Everyone, hello, hi. Audrey. Hey. And I'm your host, Fen. And David is unfortunately unavailable today for this, uh, the last recording of 2020. So he's not here to say goodbye to this terrible year. We're going to be talking about, um, well, just two topics today, but a lot of games, I imagine. That's going to be games you play over the holidays, those with family or friends, even though at the moment it can be difficult to manage that. Uh, but we'll start with seeing how everyone's doing in the podcast and what you... I, I hear you've had packages arrive. Yeah, uh, with my move, I had to switch all my addresses, so I'm still a bit not sure about some, but uh, the first one that I got here that I made the switch for uh, arrived yesterday, and it's the Wave 2 of the Black Rose Wars Kickstarter so we, that I made the switch for uh, arrived yesterday, and it's the Wave 2 of the Black Rose Wars Kickstarter, so we, it's a board game where you play mages in a fantasy renaissance uh, setting and you go around in rooms and you make you cast spells to invoke creatures and you fantasy renaissance uh, setting and you go around in rooms and you make you cast spells to invoke creatures and you fight the other mages basically and there's one element which is a black rose which is a kind of ai and you are all fighting against it because everyone can score points but the rose can element which is a black rose which is a kind of ai and you are all fighting against it because everyone can score points but the rose can also score points so the rose can win at the end so right it's loaded with so many miniatures a lot of them there I would say moderate. It is end of the year, so I am actually overworked because uh, all projects for a pro- computer programmer go on deadline by the December 30th or 1st. <laughs> so basically, it's just work, work, work. Anyway, uh, I managed to make a couple of plays to, at Pax Pamir second edition a while. Oh, uh-huh. all right. And Alexis? Uh, on my end, I finally finished. Um... Veins of the Earth from um, the Seventh Continent. Uh, it's, I think, one of the best curves, but the um, it doesn't really use the, the rest of the map that the, the other curves uses. Um, but I, I lived with two of a Tainted Grail, which I'll probably t- talk about in another episode, um, because I'm currently finally finishing the, the first campaign too. Uh, I've put it aside for a little while and now I'm, I'm back on it. Uh, and then I'm looking forward to try the three uh, expansion campaign that I just three uh, expansion campaign that I just received, even though I haven't finished my uh, first one yet. So um, lots of fun, though. Uh, enjoying myself a lot with it. And uh, what about you, Fan? While I wait for the French version, <laughs> <laughs> you you will have to wait a little bit longer. I, I'm afraid. What about you? Um. Oh, I I've. Uh... Yeah, I'm afraid. What about you? Um. Oh, I I've. Uh... Mostly been working on a bunch of non-board game related projects and things, although some there's always development and stuff going on in the background that, that one has to do. But uh, I I managed to snag one of the late last copies of Eclipse Second Edition. I managed to snag one of the late last copies of Eclipse Second Edition. Ooh. Yeah, uh, early around around here here. So they're all sold out again now and. Um, I've only really had a chance to play that on Tabletop Simulator because getting six people together at the moment under the restrictions of the uh, region is a, yeah, yeah, it's a, certainly, yeah. But um, I got to say, it's a huge improvement over the first Eclipse, which I did not like very much, but the second one, brilliant and just phenomenally well packed. Well, what we're going to talk about today is um, at the back end of the episode, we're going to talk about let's bring it on you guys. I went off and I found a couple of sites which have listed some games. And I can imagine this is going to quite often be a bit of, oh, I've not heard of this. But I'm going to walk through these lists and see if, like, any you've heard any of these at all. 
Some sure. of them, Let's some go. are familiar, some of them aren't. So, um, first of all, I went to the Telegraph, which is a, a UK article is out yet, but my little sister just wrote an article on a board game that uh, we can play during the pandemic mm. with uh, two or three people. If any of our listeners uh, speaks French, I'll definitely try to uh, add a link to the show notes or to or Discord. Mm. Yeah, no, that would be great. And who knows if they pop up in the list or not? Uh, mm. Yeah. No, that would be great. And who knows if they pop up in the list or not. Um, okay, so this is the, the Telegraph's list. The first one's called Herd Mentality. And this seems to be one of these party games, um, you know, with like questions and cards and things. Apparently the most obvious answer wins. Um, Never heard of it. to be one of these party games, um, you know, with like questions and cards and things apparently the most obvious answer wins um never heard of it i haven't either it looks cute it's got a box which is uh, patterned like a cow you've got to like write the answers to questions down and the majority uh if, if i haven't either it looks cute it's got a box which is uh, patterned like a cow you've got to like write the answers to questions down and the majority uh if if the if if you give the majority answer, you win because you're within the herd. And if you're not with the herd, you get stuck with this pink cow that apparently indicates uh, that you're destined to lose or something. We know that if... A... Yeah, it's got the good little pen that you keep the pink cow in and everything. Um, but uh, I hadn't heard of that one before, so I couldn't say how it plays. But apparently it goes up to 20 players, which seems a bit reckless in this um, day and age. I'm sure that the 20 players playing herd mentality... Oh, package! Oh, package! <laughs> yeah, be right nice. nice. Sure. That was completely unexpected. It keeps cropping up. It's from the guys who made Exploding Kittens. Yeah, I've I ah, heard okay. that one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so has, have either of you played that, or do you have any idea um, what it's like? It's... I have not played it. I've played um, Exploding Kitten a little bit, which is like, um, mm -hmm. I think, a more fun you know. I've seen it on the shows, and apparently it's dodgeball meets card play with very super soft burritos that you throw at each other. So... Oh. Yeah, it, it is an uh, it is it was launched this year. I think that it uh, I saw the announcement because I follow the blog of, of Matt Inman, the guy from Exploding Kitten. So yes, the next um, I haven't even I think heard of the company does this. It's called Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. That does sound like a very party game it again. It does. It does. Apparently, it's a, it, it plays a bit like Snap, but you have to match the image on the card with a spoken word. Uh, put put the card in the draw pile and say, "Tack cat tack." Uh, put put the card in the draw pile and say, "Tack cat." Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza in the sequence. Ooh. So it seems like it's one of those silly kind of fun, play it fast, um, slightly better than Snap games. That reminds me a bit of. Um... Anomia, if you ever played that. I haven't, no. Yeah, it, it's a very... Anomia, if you ever played that. I haven't, no. Yeah, it, it's a very fun game where you have a card with like a symbol and a color on it and a name and everybody uh, is given cards and whenever there's a match, you have to say what's on the... Um, say something in the in the category mm -hmm. of the, the other people's card and then you get that card if you if you do it so for yeah. example if, if someone has mountain you have to say like the quickly mount ellen it's very fun and uh it creates some some nice situation in, in between people and a very fun party game too i'm back oh everyone everything okay got your package like more listed there, listed there, but then this other list I think is a little more. Uh, we we won't go to details on what each one's like, but if anyone's played any of these, and I have played some of these ones, we can briefly talk about them. Yeah. Yeah. I, so one thing that I wanted to ask you before the package mm -hmm. arrived was these lists and articles. They're like what games you could uh, play uh, during article. It's always Monopoly. Oh yes, Monopoly did appear on the previous list quite low oh. down, but yeah. <laughs> have, have, okay. uh, and the risk. Don't forget the risk. Yeah, risk, yeah, risk didn't appear there. What game to play if you want to have less friends? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then there's Fog of Love, which I think is a good shout because for played it, but I've uh, I have a couple of friends who who have it. Um, I thought it's very good. It is. Yeah, I I own it. Um, and we play it here. Uh, it is very much like a blend between a board game and a role playing game. Like sadly in that line. So if you're uncomfortable in expanding on the story line. so if you're uncomfortable in expanding on the story narrative a bit it can be um 
a bit sort of awkward. But as it's just two players and, you know, usually played by couples, uh, it should be something you can kind of click with. It's gorgeous, beautiful, and nicely done in that you learn the rules as you go along and the game adds all. And nicely done in that you learn the rules as you go along and the game adds more elements and becomes more complex. And eventually you can have some very fun stuff like even returning characters from pe previous sessions make an appearance. So oh, nice. I, I really do recommend that Like for two players. I think it's fantastic. Uh, the next one, fantastic. Uh, the next one I think most of us are familiar with, which is Wingspan. Yeah, Wingspan is a oh, the, the very birds fun game. game. Yes, yeah, the birds game. Uh, it, it won all uh, all categories of last year Board Game Geek Awards. I, yeah. I think uh, it missed just the best podcast. <laughs> so that I I think I go as far as to say um, my only downside on Wingspan is uh, for us over here you have to buy the European expansion to get like lots of birds you recognize. <laughs> I played this with um, with, with family and um, some family members are very like ardent bird watchers, and they were disappointed that they were a baseline. You know, over here in Europe, could you not put the European birds in for the European copies and let us buy the American ones as the expansion? But um, yeah, and... yeah, there's actually a balancing problem there. Uh, <laughs> the, the American birds are actually uh, super, super good. So the European expansion was also are balancing because the uh, the original setup had a lot of birds who changed the uh, uh, i don't know they can change habitat switching habitat is very powerful and there were plenty of those uh, and there was a lot of padding in the american version hmm. i see uh, and there was a lot of padding in the american version hmm. i see nice. uh, i I've played a bit of it, especially the the online the the computer version. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more uh, into Race for the Galaxy. I think that it's streamlined, more streamlined, and uh, a lot Race for the Galaxy. I think that it's streamlined, more streamlined, and uh, a lot more fun to to get into the tactical yeah. mindset of it. I agree. I agree. Within the Tableau Builders, I think Race of the Galaxy is very good. San Juan is the best of the accessible ones, in my opinion. Which uh, which one? San Juan. Um, it's, oh yeah. Yeah, you know the Puerto San Juan. Um, it's, oh yeah. Yeah, you know the Puerto Rico themed Race for the Galaxy, basically yeah, yeah, yeah. the thing that came before Race. And uh, but I think Glory to Rome is by far and away my favorite of the Tableau Builders. Um, okay. Well, next of all, we got Tiny Towns, which I own and I can thoroughly recommend. Uh, so for those who are not familiar with it, um, they show where you're going to put resources on your grid and then you get to convert those resources into a building in one of the spaces where you placed the resources previously. It's very much like kind of constructing Tetris pieces onto your grid and then shrinking them down and trying to get the highest number of points. Um, the real uh, like crunchy bit that get Yeah. It if i if i remember correctly uh it's also something that you have in uh in agricola in uh mm. caverna and I, I think it's it's probably the most interesting part of the, those games where you have to think about the other players um economy yeah yeah, yeah that's it... what made the puerto rico good these games i am just <laughs> so bad because i look at my stuff and i look at the other stuff and i just have no idea what they're trying to do like a lot of those games, um, I, I think that it's universal, but my mom just plays them, does not understand the rules, and still wins. And I'm <laughs> like, like a lot of those games, um, I, I think that it's universal, but my mom just plays them, does not understand the rules, and still wins. And I'm <laughs> pretty sure that most moms do that. Yeah. Yeah, that is a mum thing, certainly. That's a mum thing, yes, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get very flustered and just plays them, does not understand the rules, and still wins. And I'm <laughs> pretty sure that most mums do that. Yeah, yeah, that is a mum thing, certainly. That's a mum thing, yes, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get very flustered and get very upset and be like, I don't understand anything that's going on. I'm not having a good time. I've got the highest score. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. I get very flustered and get very upset and be like, I don't understand anything that's going on. I'm not having a good time. I've got the highest score. What? Yeah, yeah. You've actually While had... winning. I, I actually, exactly. uh, now I'm describing the last the last game of Wingspan we played. Right, that was actually the result. There, other people are doing. If you want to do really, really well, you can just manage by 
just getting whatever resource they're picking each turn and doing the best you can. So yeah, it, and it's not too expensive either. It's a reasonably priced game for what you get. Uh, next of all, they got Dead of Winter. Mm. Oh, um, I played this one. Yeah. Yeah. Barely starting to read in Italian, and so I had to read the cards, and I could read them, <laughs> but I had no idea what the words that came out of my mouth meant. <laughs> it was You're stupid. Not... That ca that game kind of sticks out in uh, next to uh, to the other ones, right? <laughs> or, is, or is it just me? Bit of an odd one to have in here, but great production quality, and everyone plays differently every time. So it's more, and they're saying for more for like an older group of people over Christmas. I feel it lands around um, uh, Battlestar Galactica and yeah, exactly Camelot and uh, and so on, where it's it's a bit more weighty. But yeah, it's a it is a but yeah, it's a it is a good game. But I don't know if I'll be playing it at Christmas with the family. Yeah, exactly. It, a, a game that I want to play with my family it has to be a game that I can explain in ten minutes and that we can play within an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. This one pretty much ticks the boxes, and this next one coming. This one pretty much ticks the boxes, and this next one coming, which is Men at Work. And this is the kind of game which um, you can play with younger kids because they have an advantage because it's a dexterity-based game. Oh, nice! It's um, you are b building a construction site. Uh, you got to place girders and workers on a bunch of different platforms, and it ends up looking a bit like girders and workers on a bunch of different platforms, and it ends up looking a bit like, um, you know, like what's the name of the game with the tube where you pull the pins out and the marbles fall down it ends up looking like like a mess like that mm. kaplunk it's called um yeah but it, it ends up looking like a mess of stick verse um oh it, it i i actually like the look of that one i enjoy games like that um then we have flamme rouge if you like dexterity buzz game i will have a great recommendation uh, then we've got one which uh, we have played here, which was Jaws. Oh, Ooh, yeah. a great recommendation. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably yeah. talk. We, we are going to talk about this one in the future. We're going to hopefully get us all together to play it before we do. Well, um, three of four of us, because it only goes to five, uh, four players, and there's five of us normally. But uh, yeah, so Jaws, I can already say, is really good, very enjoyable. Um, Still have to play. Same. Yeah, yeah we're going to sort it out. Don't worry. We uh, then we've got Mysterium, which is always oh. a hit. Oh, yeah, I, it... I gifted it to my mom because mm -hmm. she liked uh, Dixit from my that my sister has, and we never got to play it. No, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, still left to play. A friend of mine has it. It is uh, absolutely gorgeous to look at. Anyway, it's mm. very beautiful. It's a very high production value. Yeah, it, it looks good. The art is gorgeous. It plays nicely, and it lands. It's a lot of fun to be the ghost and a lot of frustration simultaneously. That joy that everyone talks about where you hand somebody a couple of cards and they fixate on the wrong highly, like the color. And you're like, no, I mean the hats, the hats. And you can't say anything. And then you try to give them another card later on with just a hat. And they look and they go, oh, look, these two previous were green and this one's now yellow. So it must be to do with this. And you're like, no, there's a hat on it. <laughs> can't you see the hat? Or, or you put down something because you thought that it was, or, or you put down something because you thought that it was uh, something completely different, like thinking that it was a, a, a car instead of a boat or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, or you put a card down and they look and they go, oh, that's obviously this. And you're like, oh, God, yeah, it's obviously that. It's obviously that. But I didn't, I didn't think it was. I didn't see that. Obviously that. But I didn't, I didn't think it was. I didn't see that. <laughs> Um, then we got the old classic Survive, Escape from Atlantis, which was, of course, yeah, been around a long good. time. Yeah, it's surprising how good it is considering its age. Like, it's it's an old game. I mean, yeah, th that's actually partially part of its charm, because uh, everyone can grasp the mechanics. It works very fun. It puts you on a timer. It's very good. Yeah, it's quite a nice tactile experience as well. 1982, that's where it's from. That's a very oh. old game. But sold of and me, sold of and me. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's incredible. You, you are younger than that. I'm 89. Oh. And Alexis is even younger. <laughs> that's a, that's that, as old, old as me. Shame. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's as old, old as me. Shame. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's the version they got here i think is more modern i recall the version that my grandfather had which had all plastic pieces that you took off the board um like plastic island pieces and and a green plastic sea monsters yeah pieces and and a green plastic sea monsters yeah um very tactile experience a lot of fun yeah i think that i had one like in the 90s or something when i when i grew up my cousin had it so we played it uh, when my cousin had it so we played it uh, when uh, we were together on christmas and on holidays so that's actually a very good uh, game for holidays uh, then we got Splendor, which keeps coming up on the list, and I mean to to pl pick it up, but I don't like it. <laughs> well, no, you describe it. Actually, you describe it, and then tell us why you don't like it. Uh, well, I don't remember I, I, everything, but I remember there are jewels cards, and there are numbers of them, and you have to pick. There is a kind of draft, but it's it feels like a draft, but it's not a real. There, there is literally none. Or I felt like there was none, and I felt that it was missing. But if it was there, I would not have seen it. So I just don't know what to do with this game. I played it at a convention I, I, five years ago, I think. And uh, it, uh, a little bit uh, like I, Dominion, right? Yeah, uh, actually, you can buy cards in Splendor, if I, if I remember correctly, because... Uh, I have no direct experience uh, in that. I, I was just curious, and one day I documented it because it is considered a very good entry game. It is recur. It is a recurring entry. It is recur. It is a recurring entry on BGG and on a lot of board games subreddits. Next of all, we got one I've never heard of, but I really like the look of. In fact, I am really quickly gonna like just push this image so you can see this for, for everyone else. If at home, you should Google this. I was going to talk about Wavelength oh. so you can see this for, for everyone else. If at home, you should Google this. I was going to talk about Wavelength. Oh, later. That, that, where were you? I, 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 yes. then, oh, then, yeah. Go ahead, you take over. Here's Wavelength. Wavelength might be hard to describe without an actual picture, so I'd invite a listener to Google it quickly. Basically, one player basically one player receives a prompt containing two opposites, uh, hot and cold, or good game and bad game, as well as a dial that points somewhere in between those opposites. You then have to give a hint that fits your prompt. For example, lava if your dial points to the hot extreme, uh, and your team tries to and gives it that game show feels. Uh, and it, it, it's very fun to to try and. Um, understand the brain of other people uh, i've played this game with family um, when i played with my cousin we were unable to get any points when i play with my sister we uh constantly got either five that game is dixit for engineers um yeah a, a little bit um it, w what i love is that there's a lot of cards and some of them can be really hard so for example one of the the one that we had was like uh, underrated movie and overrated movie and like overrated movie is extremely <gasps> easy underrated movie does um there's a lot of uh, really cool uh, opinion based <laughs> ones that i really like i'll buy it sounds like a fun game um right um then we got the quest for el dorado which apparently is another racing board game that's actually a very nice twist on a deck building game it's basically a deck building game where all players begin with the same deck and you can uh, move. The, the, the goal of the game is to complete a race to the door of El Dorado and uh, you can either buy cards or spend cards from your hand uh, El Dorado, and uh, you can either buy cards or spend cards from your hand uh, to get points to move. And... Uh, it is very simple, as in all Knizia games, you basically end up with wanting to do more than you can actually do. And uh, Knizia games, you basically end up with wanting to do more than you can actually do. And uh, it works because it's very fast. It feels like race. There are multiple paths to victory. And it's so 
easy to be played that actually my six year easy to be played that actually my six year old kid is very good at it nice nice and um and then we got our our obligatory ticket to ride cropping up um in the top five and i i'm gonna say this is this is the one i would pick myself which is ticket to ride. but i'll be honest i do not want to play ticket to ride with five or six players because the, the the it wears out its welcome i think i only played usa and yeah, yeah there are some points where it, as soon as you get over three people it's just impossible yeah well if i was going to rank them i'd put usa at the bottom like i'm um uh, nordic counties i quite like as well i really enjoyed switzerland which is a two three player specific map but this ticket ride new new york i think was just been the best of them you're done in 15 20 minutes you get all of the experience of ticket to ride and you're like oh let's just have another one let's play best of three which is pretty cool Speaking of which, the entry level um, cooperative game turns up next, which has already been mentioned once today. Pandemic? Pandemic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Perfect timing. <laughs> Very appropriate. Um, it's just just a good game when it comes to being not too, too complex, but easily able to overwhelm you when you're playing. Not like mechanically with the rules, or oh, this is too much, but like oh, this situation, we we can't deal with it anymore. Um, it's uh, it keeps the difficulty on a knife edge. Yeah, I would uh, I would definitely more um, recommend Pandemic Legacy. I think that it managed to make that uh, that knife edge play into a, a story, which is very interesting. Like you are able to win despite having really harsh odds, and then the games offers you a bigger challenge, and you may manage to keep escalating so that you constantly ride that high. Uh, it's very, well, uh, it's very well thought out. Indeed. I think um, overall, Pandemic is a very good first co-op game because yeah. you don't have many different things that the players can do, so you can discuss between each other without being parasited by too many things. And abilities and stuff. That's all a cup of tea. Actually, as a programmer, I love to have global knowledge of a uh, game state, and I like to to uh, foresee uh, the future outcome and the future updates of the game state. But I I actually understand that, that uh, it's not everyone's cup of. I actually understand that. that uh, it's not everyone's cup of tea because you have to account for a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine we will probably talk about pandemic in length at some point. Next of all, one of my already always recommend if somebody says, what can I have that's two player is Jaipur. And I have that's two player is Jaipur, which is just one. Which is splendor for two players. <laughs> Oh, Splendor for two players? Well, then sign me up for Splendor, I guess, because I love Jaipur. I, I think it's fantastic. I uh, I actually don't know a lot about a lot about people who love Jaipur. Actually, uh, like end up liking Splendor, so I think they are basically the same kind of game. I think it's still commerce, and you have to build stuff and get two points before someone else, right? Mm, yeah, it's um basically kind of like a basically kind of like a set collecting game, collecting a color, but you will have that whole uh, risk of and reward of am I getting the more I sink into a color, the more I play of it, the more I get for doing that, and I get bonuses for dropping larger amounts, um, depending on the type. Um, if you're quick and you get in early, then there's you get a chance to get the better bonus tokens early on so it, all the games always feel very tight and you play over three rounds um and the box is tiny it goes absolutely anywhere it's uh it's a thorough recommendation for me this one and just to wrap up this list for christmas and our own christmas uh, stories or holiday stories and everything is the number one um this is a, a big thumbs down from me i'm afraid i bought this game, I sold this game, I bought this game, I sold this game, but my friends love it, and that's Cosmic Encounter. Ooh, um, I actually like Cosmic Encounter. It's the, the ooh, um, I actually like Cosmic Encounter. It's the, the one where the rules change with every game, right? Yes, yeah. it, it is. Yeah, you know, all the rules change because based on what races people are playing, and I just find it 
I don't know. I've n- it's never engaged with me, but everybody else I played it with. Oh, n- it's never engaged with me, but everybody else I played it with always loved it. <laughs> so it was only me who had a miserable time. I never tried it. So to explain this quickly, Cosmic Encounter is a lot like Risk, uh, except that every player plays a different race of alien with different power that different power that completely breaks the game. So for example, one of them will uh, win the encounters they lose, or they can force player to fight alongside themselves, or if you have, um, or they might have their own winning condition. Um, the game balances itself by allowing multiple players. So there's a lot of alliance play that goes around during the game, and it makes it very fun. I wouldn't play it at a at a party with with family, though. I would want to have some people that uh, enjoy board game at least a little bit more, uh, because they they can be like uh, more, uh, because they they can be like um, you know they, they, it can be a little bit complicated. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it can. and it can also last for like a good two hours, which would be uh, would be too much for a family dinner, I feel. That's one of the things I really wish it had was just an inbuilt clock of like, oh, okay, this is the winner. Well, like I said, like my, my friends adore it and <laughs> love it. And I'm just like, oh, well, you guys go have fun because I've never enjoyed a game of it. I just sit there bemused, bewildered and a bit frustrated. But then again, no, not every game's for every person. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about the games that we like to play over the holidays, the stuff we play with our family when we can, or perhaps friends. Perhaps we're having to play them over Tabletop Simulator or their own um, proprietary uh, Get programs this year. But uh, let, let's give it a go. Who'd like to go first? Oh, well, I have one, which is uh, colleagues from university and my brother, because basically... It is an old game, but the Italian print of the of Chaos in the Hard World is uh, actually didn't go out of print for a lot of time. So I snatched the copy and gifted it to my brother. And since then, it to my brother. And since then, we play it on the on Christmas actually, when it's Christmas so the day after or St. Stephen's. I don't know if other other countries uh, celebrate that day. <laughs> Nothing like skulls for the gods, for the god of skulls and Christmas. God of skulls and Christmas. <laughs> yeah, blood for the blood god and uh, skulls for his throne of skulls. So yeah, uh, basically it's not about Christmasy, but it's our Christmas tradition. You know, I played the uh, I played the Space Hulk with my brother uh, the day before I got married. So uh, I played the Space Hulk with my brother. Uh, the day before I got married, so we are that kind of gamers. <laughs> uh, actually, I lost both games. We ended up playing until three a.m. I mean, if you have fun, have you yeah, really that's lost? Of fun. Yeah, it was a winner. The, the 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 day after on the morning I got married, so I lost on all the line. I was going no, to suggest that, that... that you couldn't be lucky in everything. <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I actually want to delete this sentence. Please so delete it in after action beco- before my wife hears this. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it will be deleted for sure. Of course, of course. Always. Hey, this is post production Alexi. Uh, I tried to delete that line, but I was unable to edit it out. So, um, sorry, Teclis. I say the aforementioned uh, quest for Eldorado. So, that's uh, our Christmas games, which are famous board games. Otherwise, we play cards. Yeah, we, we play cards a lot in my family, the French game uh, Bullet, yeah. where you play with a traditional uh, 32. Is it 32? That, that yeah. is an incredible. Traditional uh, 32. Is it 32? That, that yeah. is an incredible... A deck of cards? That is an incredibly uh, French game. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. My grandparents used to play it. They taught us. And since then, it's it's the thing that we've been playing. It plays fast. Uh, it's something... It's, it's the thing that we've been playing. It plays fast. Uh, it's something that all the family can play. And 
in my family, we are not a lot. I have a sister and basically that's it. Since all my cousins have kids, we don't see them anymore. So it's me, uh, my parents, my sister, the boyfriends, and it's done. And my parents, my sister, the boyfriends, and it's done. And yeah, there are yeah. always four people saying, oh, I want to play Bullet and the others, <laughs> the other two or three are like, yeah, we'll watch. It, it's like bridge for French people. <laughs> Actually, a lot of countries have the, their own traditional set of cards. For example, uh, the traditional set of cards is from Naples, and it's 40 cards. I, I think that's uh, 52 cards, the, the French set, the yeah. hearts, clubs, spades, and diamonds. Yeah. 52. Yeah. yeah, 52, and you make it 32 if you take out uh, everything from 2 to 6 included. Yeah, just <laughs> get out of here. And the ducks. I love the ducks. My, my favorite cards. <laughs> well, th th that's the game that my grandmother will play. And uh, now that I'm father, I only see her at that time. So, yeah, we, we want to spend time together. So It's a very fun game. With my parents, they like to play Kitu Herd. What was the name, right? Herd? Uh, Herd Mentality? You, you put me on the spot, yeah. Herd the, mentality, the, that's the herd mentality. Herd mentality, yes, thank you, mentality. And uh, key to double is a bit the, the, the same almost thing because you have to, uh, you have a question like jump. I high is the highest peak jump, exactly. Oh. Um, and so every team will make guesses, write it on a uh, piece of uh, whiteboard. And you put all the white boards together, and then you have to bet where you think the real answer is with uh, chips. Where you think the real answer is with uh, chips. And you put them together or on a board, and then depending on where the real answer is, you get the points or not. And the last question, you can bet all your points and then get no points if you uh, completely fail the question or get double your points you uh, completely fail the question or get double your points if you win the question which is why the game is called key to double yeah i've um i've played gambit 7 a while ago at a convention that was, but that was very enjoyable and good because everyone could sit in the groups that they were playing with and still take part so it worked very well. Yeah, that's the advantage with games with silly questions like high high is the highest peak jump because no one knows. Yeah, I, to be brutally honest, if someone had told me that pigs could jump, I would be like, are you sure? Because I've, uh, I've, I've encountered a lot of pigs. My aunt owns a farm. I've never seen... No, no, no. It's 70. Wow. <laughs> I just googled it up. <laughs> <Okay>. It's 70. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you learn stupid stuff. <laughs> the more you know. On my end, yeah. a game that we often play at um, during our family uh, family gathering is called Rampage. Um, you have a little the buildings and meeples on those buildings, and each player plays um, as a kaiju. And what you do? Yes. Yes, it's it's really really fun. Uh, it's Rampage like the video game. Somewhat. I used to own this. I had to sell it when I left the UK and moved because I didn't have space for it. It's really great. Wasn't there a video game called There Rampage? was. It's not like it, but it's a similar idea. It, it's a similar concept, but it's not the same yeah. um, IP. Okay. What you do is that you're going to like pinch out a, a meeple to throw it against a building to try and destroy the building. You're going to uh, destroy the building. You're going to uh, blow fire by a um, blowing onto the building to try and make it fall. You're going to uh, just move your uh, move your kaiju by uh, actually uh, pinching a uh, puck across the board. And the point is to try and eat as many civ uh, puck across the board. And the point is to try and eat as many civilians as possible. It's a very tactile and, and fun game to play. And what's very fun about it is that the whole family can play it. It's uh, it's really great. Remember when I mentioned that convention where I played yep. and don't remember Splendor? Remember Splendor? Uh, I think one or two years later, they did a real size rampage. Oh. People were wearing uh, Dino pajamas and they had to move around. And yeah, <laughs> apparently it was lots of fun. I can imagine. Yeah. It's also known as Terror in Meeples to make a movie in Hollywood with 
the rock Dwayne yeah Johnson. that's very positive yeah uh, that that one was based in the vi- on the video game actually okay okay that was that was yeah uh, i i would really recommend it it's always a fun game to um to play together yeah just make sure you've got plenty of space around because it's definitely a standing game it's not <laughs> game. well oh, cat would be amazing <laughs> at it really but they just wouldn't follow the rules the biggest schedule of all um the other game that we uh we often play is um Sushi Go, which is uh, a, a mm. very, very fun little party game that's kind of like a, I guess, where you receive the. It's a drafting game. Yeah, it, it's a drafting game. Yeah, that's a better. Uh, you you receive the hand of card, uh, in which you're going to pick one, and then hand your hand of card to the next player, and uh, you do that until there's no more card in play, uh, and the po- the point is until there's no more card in play. Uh, and the po- the point is that you're trying to build um, basically fi- families of sh- sushi. So you want to get all the makis or all of the tempura or all of the. You you just want to to get a certain number of points. And because of the the way the points are distributed, uh, you have to get a certain number of points. And because of the the way the points are distributed, uh, you have to think a little bit if you want to try and um, block another player's. Um, block another player's uh, gameplay or if you want to go for uh, a specific objective it's um it's a lot of fun it's very easy to live it's um it's a lot of fun it's very easy to to learn and very easy to play uh you do need at least four people if you want to have fun with uh but i i would recommend uh sushi go we play we play it two player it's oh um, you you can play two player you can play with a dummy hand okay take cards out as well but when you were talking about the interaction, the most sort of interesting part of that is when somebody takes the wasabi, which doesn't do anything by itself, but triples the yeah. next nigiri picked. And so the person sitting after you might look and go, well, I kind of want to get some more of this tempura to get myself to a triple set, but I could take this three-point nigiri. You also have a yeah. chopstick that allows you to uh, like exchange it for another card. So you take two cards on one of your turn. But yeah. if you end up with the chopstick, it's like negative points. Uh, or it's worth nothing? I don't remember. It's worth nothing. It's worth nothing. Yeah, but... yeah. It's basically a way of saying I don't want to pick anything right yeah. now and skipping but, the go. But you have to be careful about not... Yes, absolutely. Um, I like the dynamic towards the end of, uh, of puddings not scoring until the very end of the game, and they score quite heavily. Um, I, Alexis, I don't know if you've ever played it, but there is actually a, a, a fun variant um, that we play, which is Sushi No, which Ooh. is exactly the same mechanically, but changing fun. that, re- it becomes a bit of a head burner because it's quite difficult. All of a sudden you're like, oh, I'll have some chopsticks or I'll get myself some wasabi. And then you're sitting there trying to avoid getting nigiri to put on it. And you're trying to get the least number of, oh, of uh, yeah, yeah. I can, game. I can imagine you want the, the most diverse ends possible of two. And like having the least amount of pudding, so ending up with a pudding is really bad in that mm. case. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fun, and it, it, you think something as simple as okay, you're not trying to score the highest number of points, you're trying to score the lowest, wouldn't change the game very when... much, but it really does. I, I know what I will try at Christmas then. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Fen? Well, I was about to say, um, I uh, there's a number of games we play, but a lot of them come up on the list already. Um, Azul, uh, Mysterium, um, uh, Ticket to Ride. But one that hasn't been mentioned that we do enjoy playing, or two, I should say, I'm going to go quickly into one of them is Power Grid, which I oh, would say yeah. is Monopoly, but not bad. That's it, it is very much like a you know Power Monopoly is about. And by now, I think everyone should know what Power Grid is like. But for those who don't, essentially, you run a power company. You buy different power stations of various uh, different power stations of various uh, different material types: coal, gas. Um, nuclear, uh, renewable, or even burning bio waste. Um, and there's a lot of a, a very nice supply and demand mechanic in the game, which is entirely determined. Supply and demand mechanic in the game, which is entirely determined by the players. So you sit there and you go, oh, well, uh, these renewable plants just give me energy for free. Fantastic. I just build them and sit in there. But then eventually the price of coal drops really far down and you're like, oh, maybe I should get this very efficient coal plant. Uh, 
it's always fun. maybe I should get this very efficient coal plant. Uh, it's always fun um, and always sort of people really dig into it. And I find it is it's not so simple that children could play it, but non gamers seem to click with it quite well, especially um, members of our family are a bit more. Um, they're a bit members of our family are a bit more. Um, they're a bit more economically minded, you know, involved in. Um, that's one, and the other one's Concordia, which um, I've recently heard described as on Mars, but not as complicated. And that it's been a while; good. we've been a year since we got to play Concordia. It's like, just a really enjoyable game. Um, I, I'm hoping to play it some more uh, this Christmas, which we're going to be playing on um, Tabletop Simulator with people, with family and friends. Such is life in 2020. Yeah, such is life. So it's a Roman time set uh, economic game. Buying, um, producing goods in certain cities and then um, uh, trying to think about what the other players are doing and stuff. It's You'll have to send me a link because very this, good. Uh, this I, seems I'll interesting. I'll have to. I, I, I have put myself on the spot because I've suddenly realized I got the box of Concordia sat here and I was like, I'm going to build. It's really good, but I cannot go into massive details about what it's like, except it's always a hit with everyone who plays it. Two players to four players. It, it's always been an enjoyable time, but I, I oh, five players it goes up to, but we've not played five. But I haven't played it since um, last Christmas. Well, I do I will tell Najik and, and they'll probably want to join as well because Najik loves this game. It's BGG top 20. Mm, I, it deservedly so. And once you got to grips with it, you can play On Mars, which is the one I, my brain got scrambled on it because On Mars has a lot of Concordia elements in it, but it's way more complex. Like Concordia elements in it, but it's way more complex. Like what On Mars. I was gonna. I, I would say on the, it's a five on the waiting. It's like I've never played a game as heavy as on Mars, but it's satisfying still. Concordia, that's my other Christmas recommendation, and we're gonna be playing it this Christmas for sure. Christmas recommendation, and we're gonna be playing it this Christmas for sure. Okay, well that I think brings us through this section, and we're now going to talk about um, the Kingdom Death latest update, the Black Friday update, the giant dump, text and image dump that happens every year. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Alexis, lead us. <laughs> I don't think that we'll go too much into uh, into details about about everything because this update is a lot of. Um repeat and basically compounding all of the information that we knew about the GC into one big update, uh, but with something to look forward to, I guess. Uh, the, the one thing that I'll say to, to try and not be constantly negative for the rest of the update is that while the, you know, the new content and uh, the stuff that has been added to the GC might be good and looks nice, uh, I would have a few narrative minis, a couple of new systems that didn't seem to be sprawling monstrosities, uh, rather than wait three years for something that if, uh, yeah. you know, it requires a lot of uh, the parts to be working really well. If if uh, if uh, two of the monsters are bad, or if the, um, uh, the philosophy system doesn't work, or if the pattern system is not really well implemented, then the whole thing might go down and just be a really tedious campaign to play. And there's already a few systems that look like they might be tedious campaign to play. And there's already a few systems that look like they might be very tedious, like the philosophy system that I really like the idea of, but might be um, a lot of management or the encounter system, who which might be the very same. The, a lot of... Um, uh, lengthening the the game the encounter system who which might be the very same the a lot of um uh lengthening the the game time for not a lot of uh reason like it could have been just another monster hopefully it's good hopefully there's a yeah there's a way to yeah, record ho observation hopefully with uh, another monster hopefully it's good hopefully there's a yeah, there's a way to record yeah, ho observation, hopefully, which is, uh, Adam, uh, which is easy about to keep the track game, of. Uh, less tedious on, on some of the um, uh, management and stuff, but we'll see how that goes. 
uh, in, in any case, uh, uh, in, in any case, uh, unless you have something to say, Fen or Audrey. I, I do. I, I just wanted to say um, uh, people who are within my community or, uh, will know that I'm in the same position as you. I look, I'm look. i looking right now at the, the list and on the left where he's listed everything that was originally promised in the guest chest expansion. And I'm like, I want the stuff on the left. I want, uh, that's what I backed for. And more importantly, that's what I expected to land. And I wouldn't be in this position where what I really want, which is the Abyssal Woods and the Inverted Mountain, isn't still like, who knows? Yeah, um, at least three years away. Yeah, yeah. Kickstarter, which is, he was struggling with the Lantern Festival. He had a load of ideas. He realized that was too much. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he took a $50 expansion and he realized it was going to be this big, like, Four hundred dollar brand new game, and he ha he had the humility and the self awareness to say, "I'm not going to do that. Here's your fifty dollars back. I'm sorry. Here's your fifty dollars back. I'm sorry. Uh, I want to do justice to the king and the king's story and the scribe, and I'm going to do it properly. But we'll do a new Kickstarter, and we'll get some new stuff come in, and we'll reprint the old stuff. I like that. I a thought good, it was it, a yeah. Good game developer is someone who knows how to kill their babies. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was a really well. With someone who knows how to kill their babies. Yeah, it was. It was a really well a respect. I respected that move, and I was yeah. like, I, I like this. I think it's a shame, but I think it's best for the Kickstarter and the game. And the new Kickstarter landed, and I was like, fantastic! You've, you, you've put, 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 and and uh, you know, you've shown that you can control. Shown that you can control yourself, and you can be yeah. sensible. And now this has happened, and I'm like, no, uh, this is. This is a whole new core game that requires the core game to play. Yeah, yeah. this this here itself should have been another Kickstarter happening after all of this. I, he's got yeah. all these great ideas and everything, but it's just after all of this. I, he's got yeah. all these great ideas and everything, but it's just the wrong time for this. Yeah, but it should or shouldn't, that's where we are now. And honestly, at some point, I think that the comparison with what the Gambler's Chest was supposed to contain and the other one next was supposed to contain and the other one next to it. For me, it's like when I look at my account, this is what enters, this is what leaves, this is the mess that's in between. I take the right of the Gambler's Chest list, I make minus what's left. And yeah, there's all this in between that's left. And yeah, there's all this in between that got added over three, four years now, almost four. And yeah. that's, that's, that's a lot. I, I got overwhelmed by it, actually. Seeing all the plastic figures in the update of what was supposed to be there, because there wasn't much plastic added, actually. But they represent so many, so much gameplay. The king, the croc, there's much gameplay behind it. And wow. That's overwhelming. Yeah. It is. Uh, the, God, the God Hand too. Um, that's new. In any uh, case, I, I well, always think the God Hand is in the big uh, Black Friday updates. I have to read them. Read them again two days later. Read them again a week later. And I still don't get half of it. Because there's so much information packed in there. I don't remember half of it. Yeah. And then this time I could remember the updates. Because... It it's the one good thing about this well not the one good thing but like the the best thing about this update is that it finally compounds every information about the gc into one update and there will definitely be some more content creep and some stuff that we haven't heard of that will um you know come up later come up later but in the meantime we have um you know, we, at least we have a proper list of everything that's on it. Yeah, I, I feel like you just need to look at one thing to just see what's happened, which is the monster-related bridge cards. We've gone from 112, which would have been cards for the encounters at cards. We've gone from 112, which would have been cards for the encounters at Nus, the gambler, and a couple of extra for the flower knight that were promised to 330 plus. <laughs> that, yeah. that's, that's tripled the size of what's going on. And that is not including all of the additional cards and stuff that's just been added in yeah. on the additional cards and stuff that's just been added in yeah. on extra. Like they've gone from 64 gear cards to 200 plus. 
And like, we have the knowledge cards and the god cards, which mm. are on the other side, that we don't know how can I buy my sleeves now? Yes, that's true. That's <laughs> a that's good important. point. That's important. I need Can't... my sleeves. I know, I know. They know, I know. There's, I, I keep seeing posts crop up on Reddit, and I get people contacting me directly saying, what size are these god cards going to be? And I'm like, I don't know. You'll have to just buy the Kingdom Death proprietary sleeves until whoever releases some more. I mean, I've got enough problems oh that Fantasy Flight has stopped doing their yeah. sleeves. But know? for the Paladin sleeves Kickstarter. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Nobody knows. It's just <laughs> not enough info. So let's do a little uh, flyby of the updates topic by topic. Uh, so first of all, we have the, um, the delivery timeline, which is uh, the real best bit about this update, is that we finally have something that... At, um, you, we know that the pinups are going to be sent uh, in a first wave, uh, supposedly right now. Yeah, the Australians got their first shipping notification, apparently. Yeah, the, the, the miniatures of the, the pinups are great, and I've been waiting for them on a, for a long time. Um, still not sure why I delayed this long, since it's only miniatures, but I'm, I'm glad that we finally uh, are going to be able to see those, build those, um, play around with all, uh, with the, uh, the pinup DBK instead of the normal DBK. Um, Kingdom Death Pillow Party. Yeah, exactly. That's the pin up DBK instead of the normal DBK. Um, Kingdom Death Pillow Party. Yeah, exactly. That's that's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kingdom Death RG in a cupboard. I I think that it's important also to to say that the um, you know the wave three has been divided into three uh, sub waves. The wave three has been divided into three uh, sub waves. With first the the pinups, then the GC, then the COD. Yeah. Uh, can I can I yeah. can I just say something? I would like to heartily apologize apologize to the community for suggesting that Adam split things in waves because of course I should have realized this was going to be a monkey's should have realized this was going to be a monkey's paw and he would split it and split it and split it and split it. Pinups, yeah. Yeah, pinups are great. Yeah. Um, we something we have... new finally. <laughs> exactly. Um, we will have um. Also, the the news about COD that will come later. I'm guessing that it will uh, early January, something like that. I can't wait for that. Yeah, um, uh, I'm, uh, in, I'm interested by by a campaign of death. Uh, it will definitely w will ship uh, early 2021, uh, maybe mid 2021. I, I cannot see um, Adam delivering. These are, but I yeah. guess that uh, uh, Web 3.1. One is delivering now, so it will go on, uh, I think, until February. After that, I think in March, it will begin delivery of the legendary car pack. And that will last a, a couple of other months. And after that, months, and after that uh, in May, there should be the 1.6 core print. After that, there should be in July the... The, actually, the beginning, the fulfillment of Wave 3.2, so the GCE. We'll see how everything will go. That's it's good, just going to be a lot of speculation till the GCE. We'll see how everything will go. That's it's good, just going to be a lot of speculation till we finally have the cardboard in hand. That's I I believe like I I believe that the pinups are going out. I think the card pack will be on time. Anything yeah. beyond that, I'm not gonna. Um, take his word for it until we see ship notes because it's that I'm not gonna um, take his word for it until we see ship notes because it's the further you get the more it yeah the, the cult pack given how long we've uh, waited for it I'm still not going to believe it's real until I have it in my hands yeah same the the legendary cult pack is finally going out which is each which has each which has been um teased and talked about for like five years and it was supposed to come out next month for five years now so yeah. that's good as, a, as an aside i find it amusing that he's taken the name legendary card pack for naming it given that that's what was used to mock i i do think that he's trying to uh, turn it into a positive and uh, it, it's probably going to be a bit disappointing like i'm I'm expecting for some some nice stuff. For for example, uh, the fact that um, the core monster are going to be less necessary for the with um, other monster to replace them. That seems like a, a very good direction to go. To yeah. go a bit late, but hey. It's, 
There's a bit of a kick in the teeth in there, though. Um, losing the stone circle means we lose harvest ritual. Uh, unless the screaming antelope's in, and that really hurts. Harvest ritual is one of those things that it's the only uh, KDM 1.6 that's finally um, that's coming out. That will be basically KDM 1.5 plus the content of the card pack, which you know that's that's good. Uh, it's good that it's finally being printed a version with the um, uh, with everything uh, in it. Uh, although it seems to with the um, uh, with everything uh, in it, uh, although there seem to be a new um, uh, a new rulebook uh, that's going to be just for the version 1.6. Then we have all of the update about the um, uh, just for the version 1.6. Then we have all of the update about the um, uh, Gamblers Chest news. Uh, I don't think that we're going to go into detail with everything because, as we said, uh, a lot of it is just going to be, um, you know, repeat of the content that we've seen before. Uh, a lot of it is just going to be, um, you know, repeat of the content that we've seen before. Uh, first of all, we have uh, all of the narrative minis that uh, are going to be into it, uh, finally in plastic. Yeah. So I think that Audrey is very happy about those. Yeah, yeah, I, I, lo I, I love it. I love the narratives. I'm sure about the narrative minis than uh, I am about any armor set. I think that they all look really good with uh, interesting dynamic, uh, custom uh, custom bases. Uh, which ones are your favorite? Putting you on the spot there. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, the Shadow Stalker, the one that's wearing uh, more and she's leaping in the air. And yeah, I think she really has that. Um, dynamic kick but some others have less and i just love that yeah tough guy tough guy the fat <laughs> guy yes, he looks he looks amazing i love him he is really a uh... yeah um silly i think my favorite my least favorite both wear the same armor set and that's the magma masochist i like uh she's got a nuclear scythe in uh, dragon armor and she looks incredibly dynamic and um, unusual, and then uh, the champion of the goblin, who just looks like an armor kit survivor. He's my least favorite. I just really dislike a survivor. He's my least favorite. I just really dislike. Oh, <laughs> it's 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 just an armor kit survivor, but at a, a resculpted at a bigger scale, because you can do that almost that exact pose with the armor kit. The, you know, it's got a nice base. I my favorite one is the uh, the cockroach queen. Uh, I think my favorite one is the uh, the cockroach queen. Uh, I think that she looks amazing. I I love the the bug. I love the the pose. Uh, she has a very uh, a very fun uh, base too. She's my uh, my different favorite. Then yeah. we have like um, a little highlight of the pattern system. Is too. She's my uh, my different favorite. Then yeah. we have like um, a little highlight of the pattern system. Um, I, I don't have anything to mention that hasn't been mentioned either by fan on his Patreon or, you know, in other places. Yeah, I, I'm just going to quickly surmise that uh, mostly to Instinct, although interestingly, the Brawhide Bandana is just linked to survivalism. It doesn't have the insight trigger on it for some reason. I find the keyword triggers on the pattern stuff to be very inconsistent. The gear itself is um, the stuff that's been shown here is a bit lackluster. But the imitation butcher mask looks to be that uh, interesting from the one that we've we've yeah. seen up to there. So yeah, say that. But there is one. Yes, the hypersight visor is great. A hypersight visor is. It just forget that it's like a bit kind of genre bending. It's a unique and unusual and incredibly well balanced ability that I think is fantastic. Yeah. it's a kind of interesting. So I hope that the padding cards works work like the negative fighting cards or the positive disorders. So they are there just to not making. To make to keep stuff interesting with some of randomness, yeah. But of course, the the, the right bandana is of course, yeah. But of course, the, the the right bandana is of course less than a wide headband, so it will be your third choice the, actually. The ability is also uh, really not that great. Like even if it didn't re uh, if it didn't use the a white bandana, if it was just something that you can craft, I don't think that would ever. It didn't re uh, if it didn't use the a white bandana, if it was just something that you can craft, I don't think that would ever use it. 
Um, no, it's it, it's it's just wrong for the way that the game is played in that period because Rawhide is a crit set. It doesn't even walk with Rawhide. It doesn't walk with. No, um, it's a crit set. It doesn't even walk with Rawhide. It doesn't walk with no. um, a dagger specialization. <laughs> it doesn't synergize no. with any of the elements that are on it. It's just really weird. It's really odd because yeah. this is Bright Eyes um, pattern, and she's a dagger. Yeah, and and it re it requires a dagger special too, which makes yeah. no sense because it doesn't synergize with daggers at all. Anyway, no. uh, we have the scout system, which this is something that I'm really happy to see. I'm really happy to finally have news. I'm really happy about the way it seems to work. I, I love the the smaller um, the smaller gear grid. Uh, going to be a lot of fun to play with, uh, and I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. Oh. As Fem pointed out, anyway, that's the EV keyword on the equipment, which will work only if the scout is not considered a returning survival. I actually love the idea of a two by two gear grid, which could, yeah. and the okay. cipher arrival thing is also very, very smart to and do to, to do and implement. Yeah, you also have to balance, I guess, uh, scout gear and actual uh, combat gear in case you want to to have them uh, into the fight in a pinch. I I think this is this is going going to be really interesting to play with, and that's probably one of the the best new content from the GC. Yeah. Um, then we have the encounter. I don't think that there's anything to say about the encounter. It came out uh, a while ago, and it's just the exact same. Uh... I think the shame here is that it was interesting when there was going to be two different encounters. Yeah. The fact that this one means that it's going to be a lot of repeat for the next three years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a shame. I uh, that's like as much as I like the smog singers, I do think it kind of sucks that now we're only getting one encounter. Yeah, um, you know, showcase your system, have two different variants yeah. of it. At least it's... we could have seen a bit more about the ping for the encounter uh, giant. Oh yeah, I, I would yeah, have still the resin print. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would have loved to see a little bit of the process. Uh, on a completely uh, strange news after as i said that you would not uh, would not uh do any content creep anymore we now have the wanderer system uh, added to the pc uh and uh, three new uh miniatures that are just thrown in and not on the origin list uh with lucky as a wanderer i luck sorry not lucky i really like that I'm really, really happy. I like it. I feel like this should have been shop content. Yeah, it, it should have been content, but uh, I'm happy that we're finally seeing what the wandering system will look like. Uh, I like the, the way that it's introduced. Um, seems like it's going to be fun. Also because uh, actually wanderers and philosophies, if they work, they uh, lend themselves to be shop content in the future. Yeah. Uh, definitely, they, they will be easy to to use to introduce new white boxes. Um, yeah, uh, we, we definitely will have one with the the ley line, uh, the blacksmith, the archivist, and the uh, uh, plague mask is the doctor or something. The plague doctor is the doctor or something. The plague doctor. The doctor. Yeah. The main weapon, doctor. Weapon smith, not blacksmith. Weapon smith, my bad. Um, yeah, the champion weapon smith. She's the um, weapon smith. Who was trained by the Cyclops Knight? Yeah, that that looks um that looks good. We'll have to to see what's up with that, I guess. That looks good. We'll have to to see what's up with that, I guess. Yeah, fun fact: the 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 male Doctor is basically the one miniature that was never reprinted or sold again after the first uh, the first run oh. on the shop. That's interesting because I'm trying to buy the first uh, the first run. Oh on the shop. That's interesting because I'm trying to buy one uh, for ages now. <laughs> okay, well, if, if I ever see one on uh, on eBay or something, I will uh, uh, oh, pick I you get up. It. Um, we, we also know that there's two new Floor Knights. I'm not sure what they will be. Uh, I don't think that the Floor Knights can be fixed with two new AI cards. Um, I'm in uh, agreement. Yeah. I, I have no idea. The problem. Unless one is the stats. Yeah. Even the stats just wouldn't do it. The 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 idea of the Flower Knight fight is an interesting yeah. 
it's very interesting to have a luck based uh, showdown but basically the entire game makes uh, gaining luck uh, and builds uh, uh, around luck uh, too powerful to actually work yeah well what was needed to do was basically the you need so you ha- you you you're looking at it of like, okay, well, if I get lots of luck tokens on one or two characters, yeah. then they can handle that section oh. and the others can do the others. And you have kind of a back and forth on the feeling like the fight, the flower knight on two different offenses there. Yeah. Oh, but, or um, spending luck, and... luck token and having to try and, um, you know, yeah. like a, 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 yeah. a. You should not have a monster that you can take four survivors without weapons in <laughs> and then they can punch it to death. Yeah, <laughs> e- even the the lion level one will just hack you to to pieces if you do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then we have the uh, the new monster from the GC, so the Crimson Croc, the Gambler. Then we have the uh, the new monster from the GC, so the Crimson Croc, the Gambler, the, the song uh, singers, Atnas, the King, and God Hands. Uh, we know basically nothing about the king and god hands uh so i don't think that it's worth talking about them uh and neither the gambler. really no the the king god hands uh so i don't think that it's worth talking about them uh and neither Not the gambler. really no the the king Gam- the king we might have a, a word about it at mm. some point because yeah the gambler we know is just gonna be um it's it's, it's gonna play like the watcher not mechanically but it's yeah. sitting the same it, role as the watcher in the campaign yeah, it's going to be a one of fight so all as the watcher in the campaign yeah, it's going to be a one of fight so i lantern year 20. i would i would love if there was more fight with the gambler because uh the watcher i feel can't really uh <laughs> Joke, joke intended. Breathe uh, with only one fight. It needs a couple more to to like take its wing. Uh, the the mm-hmm. crimson croc. Really happy about the um, the change on the the weapons. Uh, the weapon look. Um, the rest is stuff. That Everything we've seen. about the crimson croc is the high point of the gambler's chest. Yeah. yeah. I had to love at the paint writing though. But yeah, here. Oh yeah, definitely. That this is one of those things where it's like that is fine to procrastinate on because this first lot of art looks like it's out of a generic World of Warcraft game or something, just a generic fantasy game. <coughs> where it's <The> just <coughs> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where it's just, it's, new stuff looks like um, death stuff. Yeah. And also, it's nice to actually see the. Um, how they lay the stuff out for printing, which turns out to be the same way that the community lays the stuff out for printing, but hey. Yeah, I, I like the the way that everything seems to to look with the with the croc. Um we also got some news about the smog singer quick look with the with the croc. Um we also got some news about the smog singer equipment. Uh very happy about it. It looks like it's going to be a, a bard or like um uh hunting on type style where you can attack and and use songs to boost uh, other player uh kdm always needed more support equipment to boost uh, other player uh kdm always needed more support equipment and this seems to be it so oh it yeah. also looks like you will fight uh, three smog smog skingers at once in the shotgun board yeah yeah yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, it feels like he's. He, yeah, yeah uh, definitely. I mean, it, it feels like he's. He started work on the. They started work on the encounter system. And sorry, on the this encounter for the encounter system, and then went. Oh, uh, we need another um, set of monsters for this campaign. Let's. Uh, these ones are working quite well. Let's promote them up and expand on their gear. Yeah, see, it seems like. Uh, like it's, it kind of looks like the the siren l- um, luring the the survivor and trying to make them sing. Um, I I like the yeah, fact that we'll they weaponize to... guilt. I I don't know. I, I don't trust the stuff which uh, tricks you into guilt. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Well, you'd have to go through a lot of emotional breakdowns. <laughs> um. Then we have a co- yeah. Techless. Uh. No, yeah, actually, the the very cool part about the gear shown, I think that is that by renewing itself and honed is actually a, a solid mechanic. It is all that the thread should have been. Uh-huh. Also, there's the there's the fact with a with a smog singer's equipment that we actually have supports which just do buffs 
to singers equipment that we actually have supports which just do buffs to survivors in a very consistent way and while they sing they can keep singing so that's a very interesting new level of play and new depth yeah uh the, the problem with horns is that it makes weapon um new level of play and new depth yeah uh the, the problem with horns is that it makes weapon um you know kind of useless if you if you use them wrong uh i i'm not sure if i really uh, would ever bring a weapon like if, if it's around a weapon crafted here uh, a weapon like if, if it's around a weapon crafted here uh, i don't think i would ever bring those out uh, yeah. you remember that you could have weapons some place during down the line yeah yeah m maybe but we you know that's that's one gear to put in your in your grid it just yeah. feels like if and you might lose it that works if it's a strength five and you know you try to bring it against a level two and it just breaks then you're you know basically out of a weapon yeah. the way it's going to work is the way that the community have used frail which is frail yeah. is completely irrelevant because players do not let frail trigger exactly are either going to be underpowered or overpowered there's no in between with this kind of mechanic it's an all or nothing thing with the exception of the blood glass longsword because you can repair I, your own edge I, when you break it so you're not encouraged to be super careful with that instead you go at it it you break the, the edge and then you the longsword is is well designed that, that should uh, actually have like, been like a basic uh version of honed you know that you you spend one to to repair it yeah um you spend a, a blood token to repair it anyway we we have atnas there i don't have anything special to say about that mess we anyway we we have atnas there i don't have anything special to say about that mess we can see like a couple no. of b b uh, cards they're not special there was a lot, lot. Not, not really any kind of information there Adnes feels like just a creature of hype and he has been hyped up for a long there Adnes feels like just a creature of hype and he has been hyped up for a long time it, it, um, it might be a very fun fight I, I believe it will be just uh, there's yeah. no information there yeah yeah there no, is Honestly, Atnas is one of the fights that, in my opinion, would be perfectly fine for a. Is one of the fights that, in my opinion, would be perfectly fine for a vignette. Yeah. You have Definitely. a fight. You have the premade survivors, and that's your Christmas fight that you do. I think that is a really good point, and I hadn't thought of it before. And yes, absolutely. Yeah, that, yeah that's it, a very this good This would point. have been great as a, a, a seasonal Christmas release uh, versus Atnas, and then yeah. maybe some way of incorporating him into a campaign yeah. uh, a la it, the uh, Giga Lion. It, yeah, it, definitely. it definitely seems more like a, a sort of like additional festive content rather than the building block of a proper campaign. But maybe we will get the law that fits it. I, I... We can see that the law we do know is um, that he's the storm's master. Yeah. And then we have uh, the king uh, still not showing any new um, risk sculpts. Uh, Fan, do you think that there there might be a um, risk sculpt coming? My opinion is that the model, and I own two copies, no, three copies of this model. 50% <laughs> um, of the right, supply. The <laughs> I own the res one of the resin ones, and I own two of the plastic ones. The plastic one, which was due to be in the Lantern Festival, has to be retooled. There's no argument about that. Um, be retooled. There's no argument about that. Um, it is, it's got very poor uh, quality yeah. in respect to the Christmas of the details. It's got a lot of forming and distorting and you have to do a great deal of work. The, so I think it needs to be at least retooled. That it will definitely I, be. I genuinely think it, it needs to be at least retooled. That it will definitely I, be. I genuinely think it needs to be rescaled as well because when you put it down next to the stuff that's coming out, it looks kind of weedy. Like Compared to the Giga Lion, it doesn't have that same feel that's coming on with the newer stuff. Even likes to say the Nightmare Lion. And not met nightmare coming on with the newer stuff. Even likes to say the not nightmare lion. And not met nightmare lion, nightmare ram. Um so personally I I think it's at the very least needs a scan, a size up and a bit of retouching electronically. Um but 
you know, at a minimum, it's definitely got to be retooled. I'm curious about the uh, if the minis will see a, a change in, in size because it does look kind of punny. When I when I first mm -hmm. bought uh, mine, which I'm pretty sure is um, a recast rather than an official one. It's, if it's in resin, it probably yeah, is a recast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it just looks um, not that imposing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe this is all an elaborate troll, and the whole point of these kings is they are a bit weedy and pathetic. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Who knows? we'll uh, we'll have to see how all things go, and if the law is mm. uh, uh, makes any sense. I'm very happy to see is that it shows all of the process to create the new uh, armor set, and they all look incredibly cool and amazing and i would love to see them on my table and then he picks the worst one <laughs> I, yeah, I i I'm, do not like the death, death king armor the death king armor set no the the death king armor set looks to me like a cross between um a, a bunch of cosplayers uh, berserk cosplayers who've fallen into a sony speaker shop yeah it doesn't look at all like the king it doesn't look like the rest of the ki kingdom death stuff it just doesn't look great. I, I, yeah. The rest of the key, Kingdom Death stuff, it just doesn't look great. I, I, yeah, there's a couple of King's coins, and the rib section has some echoes of the King, but yeah. everything else on it doesn't doesn't say to me this is armor made from the, the King at all. And the thing is that a lot of those armor set that uh, Adam shows up kind of look like stuff inspired. A lot of those armor set that uh, Adam shows up kind of look like stuff inspired by the King in Yellow. Uh, or some yeah some really cool uh ID for an armor set that would come from uh trench coats babies. I I really wish that um that that this the image of, of all of the various uh, ideas was way way bigger because there yeah I want to see them a high quality. Um, I I absolutely <laughs> love the one the 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 male and female the bottom left corner yeah. the male has a hammer made out of. Uh, or an axe made out of a, a giant face, and the those two just scream the armor set uh, coming out of it, and yeah. I would love them. I have yeah uh, uh, yeah. No, no, I, uh, Adam justified that uh, by saying that that is a set made to slay a king, not made out of parts of the king. But I, I don't know if this is actually how it will. Uh, and uh, anyway, yes, it, it has a kind of of vibe from Gurren Lagann. <laughs> I think they, uh, yeah, it, it looks like the the spy the the, the, the the costumes they get with the spirals and all the stuff. Yeah, I. Yeah, I. I think that it's. One of the things that I really like about Kingdom Death is that every single armor set looks kind of primitive, and even the the best looking ones, like the the lantern uh, stuff, you know that it was made by like breaking lanterns and and turn uh, stuff. You know that it was made by like breaking lanterns and and putting the parts together to try and make a defensive uh, armor. This yeah. looks this looks like um, you know uh, ages in advance. Uh, yeah, well, we've seen the same thing with Screaming God armor, which ages in advance. Uh, yeah, well, we've seen the same thing with Screaming God armor, which looks way different from anything that comes before it. Yeah, uh, we'll have to see the the progression for those, and if if it feels justified, obviously it's kind of hard to tell without having the the thing coming out yet. But the weapon look, uh, you know, very warmer here. Uh, I, I feel the weapons at least echo um, the the look of the king to yeah. a fair degree. I, I I like the weapons look, but I feel that they're a little bit too um, uh, conjure yeah. them or something. We'll have to see. Who knows? I, I'm looking right now at the overthrow of the axe, and actually, you're right. It looks like a dwarf um, battle axe from <laughs> Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, I see that. Um, yeah. And the, the whip looks like it's made out of a selection of speakers put together, <laughs> the subjugator. Uh, the rest of the king's uh, gear, that whip will probably have some proper strength, so. Yeah. Hey, uh, then we have no information about the gambler, but I love the process of the um, 
the manufacturing of it. Uh, I think it's great to see the Michelangelo uh, uh, process of the sculptor. I think there's one thing as well that's just worth noting is I like the gaming gazebo art. I want to know oh, yes. what this game they're playing is. Yeah, those are the legs of the gambler, of course. So don't look up. <laughs> gambler, of course. So don't look up. <laughs> well, I mean, they're bound to look up. You know what they're like. Yeah. They're going to look up and consider whether they should punch it or tear it off. Then we have no information about God Hands, and that's it. Then we have no information about God Hands, and that's it for the uh, for the new monster. Then we have the philosophy system. I, I'm one of the person that is interested by the um, the philosophy system. I like the idea of having a law filled little booklet that you you can of having a law filled little booklet that you you can look at i have no idea how any of it will pan out uh, it kind of feels like you will exchange the the cognitive cognition for uh, knowledge cards at some point and have little boost that seems to only affect the cognitive co uh, cognition thing that's like a, a sort of a you know we have the the philosophers um what is it called? Um, the senatorium where, where they discuss and exchange philosophy and maybe we'll progress there. I have no idea how any of this will, will pan out. Yeah, for me, that's why I'm not super excited by it because it's been around for so long and, um, you know, it's been pushed i can't remember it feels like forever it's been like was it two years, years ago? ago he said he rolled that oh, three years ago yeah uh, and yet still a lot of people are like i don't really i don't really know i don't know what yeah. it's going to be like i don't know and that's that feels bad yeah to be this far in with and still looking at that and going uh, i don't know I yeah, I like the fact that we have a booklet and that world inside of that booklet. Uh, I'm always happy to see more writing in the game because there's um there's kind of a, a vacuum uh, about that, and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of really interesting uh, information uh, in there. Um, yeah, a lot of the evolving uh, fighting arts thing were I don't know if it's no. legacy stuff. Um, I, I, uh, the the one that we had access to so far, the um, yeah. story of blood, I think it is yeah. in the um, uh, the tenth anniversary white speaker. It's to play with or use. It, to be honest, is it legacy? Um, it's a strain unlock, and then it upgrades while that survivor has it, and then when you get it again, I think it's only upgraded during that campaign. Okay, so where do you yeah. fill it? The, the little box in the... I don't know. Yeah, I think you have to draw a little sheet on your survival we'll, we'll have so to see how that works. Get new, um... uh, I, I do like the, the way the um, the mirror eye uh, knowledge fighting art looks, though. Um, the, the look of it and the um, the abilities where you, you need to uh, gather in some ways. It's a fun idea, but the more I think about it, I'm like, how is this going to work the, in practice? There will have to be more more gear. You you need an armor set that sits in a an well, inverted T or a T. Well, the you know, um, the interesting thing is that this is um this works for the butcher the same way that the uh, mask gives you. So we we'll, you will have the both cleavers, and probably somewhere the the butcher imitation set is probably um. Uh, has probably like a double bits in it. I don't know. That feels a bit weird. The butcher's not really a bug in it. I don't know. That feels a bit weird. The butcher's not really a bug. Yeah, kind of but it does work with torment, which is something that's introduced into the um, the butcher set. Yeah, we don't know if torment's positive or negative. That's a good question. That's there is torment and loomy, but yeah, and there's stuff. That's a good question. That's... There is torment and loomy, but, yeah. and there's stu this stuff has uh, icons which one could guess they are the the, the white ball 
and the white the white hexagon or they are possibly the same with low resolution i don't know they are shown in some cards or they are possibly the same with low resolution i don't know they are shown in some cards but i don't know to what they correspond so we'll, we'll have to see uh when we finally get those in in a year or so yeah i love the all of the pictures that they show with the the fields of fido um it feels like Adam had artists play <laughs> Disco Elysium and said, copy yes. that. Because so many of these yes. just feel like they're lifted from Dif Disco Elysium <laughs> and then given a Kingdom Death spin. Yes, that, that very much feels that way. Uh, and that's it. Then we, we have just a little bit notion about how the campaign will work and the uh, the timeline. I Yeah, I, things I'm, I, I've digged through and I'm, there's a few things that I consider either disappointments or red flags or at least points of concern so first of all this is another 30 year timeline yeah and i think that i think the biggest problem that the core game has and uh, this is something that um it took me a while to sort of internalize oh here's a 10 lantern year campaign play through this and then get people of the lantern and that just it's a huge thing to ask for players who are first playing the game to get through now sure they're gonna lose and die around lantern year three or five or six or whatever the first few times they play but it, it just it, these short camp times they play but it, it just it, these short campaigns are the kind of things we really want to see yeah that that was the most actual... interesting bit about mm. uh campaign of death for example to yeah me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I looked at this and went, oh, another 30 year campaign, because I'll be honest, I, I so I looked at this and went, oh, another 30 year campaign, because I'll be honest, I, I start to mentally check out around 20 years in yeah. Lantern. Uh, and I don't I'm worried that this is going to be the same the same experience here where it's just I think that's one it, of the reason why people like uh, people of the stars and people of the sun so yes, much it's one of it, the reason why people like uh, people of the stars and people of the sun so yes. much more because there's a lot of it, it's a lot quicker to to deal with even even it's if quicker. it's only a few years quicker it just goes faster mm. and there's there's also a big feeling of escalation yeah. in both of the ends of the in, in um uh, sleepers, because at the very least in this time, it seems like it was built towards that. Uh... It, it it does, but that that's my first concern, is another 30-year campaign. Hmm. The other one is, it doesn't feel like there's a way to put any additional monsters into this. Yeah, it's because very easy. if you look at the sheet, it's the world. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That, that, that's a real kick in the teeth if that's what happens. Yeah. That, that kind of sucks. Um, so, and I'm looking at this, and it has the same problem there's one major problem that crops up time and time again with the kingdom death timelines and that is what on earth are you doing after lantern year 12 that the level four five and six is a revelation revolutionary enough that you are brought on to wanted to fight them again oh let's fight the level four crimson croc because we're going to upgrade our armor yeah and that will uh, step with yeah, i really the, hope that the, there's the, a the, new the, level of armor Porchmon. and that's the problem that that brings me to the other sort of problem. and that's the problem that that brings me to the other sort of problem if he was planning to do that really should say it yeah. and not saying it in there is a failure I... uh, a big failure to just kind of leave this hanging gap of question yeah. and so we're left speculating on something that could make or break the experience because and so we're left speculating on something that could make or break the experience because as i say if lantern i think had two more quarry monsters that cropped up in the teens uh, um or one that cropped up in node 4 quite late on like the way the king does here i would be like yes okay this feels quite complete yeah. but that um here I would be like, yes, okay, this feels quite complete. Yeah. But there, um, there is a, a 13 years gap between the introduction of the Phoenix and the introduction of the the King, and I feel that's really way too long. Uh, it is, the King should have been, um, you know, Lion God level of power and introduced 14 or something. That would have at least filled those years a little bit. Well, I mean, you, that was yeah. never going to. No, happen, that that so. wasn't going to happen. But I just mean like I just mean like there should have been a monster there. It does feel like there's a, a large gap, yeah. and um, and I agree. There... Uh, as I say though, it could be our consequences of the earlier game monsters being um, being designed to fill the gap and provide yeah. gear and more progression. But I will say, I 
I, they need to have some major reworking, like something clever done, because fighting a level three, say, White Lion, doesn't feel that much different to fighting level two. Yeah. And there's a whole load of this in, in level three. It doesn't really change feel like a different fight uh, he still targets in the same the way the gorm is just the only one escalate. that i can think that really changes from one level to the level, level three dung beetle knight has a big shift in behavior um because no, of how burrow changed it. In, in my experience it has a shift in difficulty in, in my experience it has a shift in difficulty but uh i've never i haven't felt really the uh, I, I've only fought it uh, level three like five times, maybe. So maybe that's not enough. But well, well, it, it feels for small, me bro. at least. For, for me at least, yeah, there's a big difficulty spike. But the way it behaves with Burrow kind of does. For, for me at least, yeah, there's a big difficulty spike. But the way it behaves with Burrow kind of does feel like a, a change in the, the 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 way that you have to yeah. approach the fight. Uh, um, it, it's yeah. it's a significant change done with a small card, is what I mean. Yeah, yeah. There. Uh, the the yeah. gom is the you know the best example there there uh the the yeah. gom is the you know the best example there mm. Ooh, and we the gom is unique in every level yeah. we have a surprise here hi david hey how's it going hello we're... uh it's all right we were just talking about um the concerns over what's going to happen with the level four six versions of monsters within the gambler's chest oh yeah that's that's kind of interesting yeah, I'm wondering how they will improve those, uh, or like introduce those levels. Yeah, we were saying that what's really needed is um, a new armor set uh, at this level, or some new gear to give you. Um... Yeah, probably the 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 pure resources or the lock at the behind level resources will give you the late game armor sets or something like that, and Hopefully. possibly they will keep kings. Uh, they they will keep things yeah for a while. Hopefully, um, I I feel like if they take uh, inspiration from the the gorm, it will be a lot more, uh, a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, actually, the, the Gorm feels very different at every level, and uh, they did a perfect job in uh, being of a different age. Yeah, that's uh, the, the Gorm is definitely the, the gold standard of Kingdom Death, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I I began to despise it because <laughs> once you find the few the, the, the few couple of things the, the the encounter trivial, you stop paying attention because uh, you can't unsee stuff. It's like the Lion Knight when you find that you can just make it run uh, back and forth uh, and target it from the distance. Uh, the the, the showdown is done and solved so if you decide to not use that you cannot unsee that yep i definitely uh i definitely get what you mean here um okay uh fan is back and i think we are here yeah um is there anything else that we wanted to mention in Oh, actually, that there is uh, true craftsmanship uh, to introduce, uh, I guess, uh, the pattern system. There is uh, the scouts uh, of that being introduced by a milestone. And uh, that aside, you fight the gambler at Atlanta near 20. So it looks a lot like the Watcher. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be uh, probably somewhat similar in that regard. Uh, we'll have to see. The Godhand is not on the timeline, so I'm guessing that the the, the same way that the... Oh no, it, it is on. Yeah, um, it's Lantern yeah, yeah. 30. <laughs> so... <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. Okay, if any is posting pictures. I, I, I'm just memeing a bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, well, David, did you have anything? Uh, did, 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 sorry, I was AFK because I have to, did, did, sorry, I was AFK because I have to tend the fire occasionally to keep it warm in here. Um, David, did you have any overall thoughts on the gambler's chest? Anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I'm really, I hope that the scout, uh, system will fix those, uh, roll a one and you die moments a bit. So, and maybe like, uh, roll a one and you die moments a bit. So, and maybe like some, a little bit of randomness now, you know? 
I hope that smooths the curve a bit. Yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully they will uh, give a couple more, um, you know, ways to to fix that. Like for example, give a couple more, um, you know, ways to to fix that. Like for example, the way that they can replace uh, another survivor during the hunt if someone dies or something. That's, um, I think that's good. I mean, at the same time, it, uh, it's all also a bit more risky because if you ac actually like lose. Uh, your stuff won't return. It seems like. Yeah. We'll uh we'll have to see how all of that pans out once everything comes out. Yeah. We will. We'll have to just see how it goes. I mean, that's the the important things now are that he sticks to the timeline that's been given here. Um, it didn't have to be. It could have just been a bunch of Kickstarter extras. Yeah. And we'd have all had it by now and be very happy, but it's been bloated up into being a big thing and it's, it's going to be judged based on yeah, this. Yeah, it, it would have been very low expectation if it had just been like a couple of new system um, in play and, uh, oh, you know, this, this suits me, this doesn't suit me, who cares, it's whatever. Here, yeah. everything has to fit together, otherwise everything breaks, so... What what I really hope is the, that Wave Four, like, includes those optional systems, but like, really as an option for us to use like the uh, f philosophy system. Yeah. Even if you don't want to use it, and you can only play it, like certain ex uh, expansions in Wave Four when you use that system, that would be bad. Yeah, it, it's one thing to have interaction between expansions. It's another thing to have a requirement within a three hundred and fifty dollar expansion. It's another thing to have a requirement within a $350 expansion. And that's about all we have time for here. So I'd like to say this is the last episode for 2020. Uh, we hope you have a good holidays and a good new year. We'll be returning early next year. Have a good holidays and a good new year. We'll be returning early next year in January to continue with our twice monthly release schedule. Uh, and from myself and everyone else, I'd just like to say have a great time, have a happy holidays, and you can catch us on our various social media. Catch us on our various social media at Alexis. Um, on Twitter at uh, AlexiM4AS. Uh, and I wish all of you a happy new year. Alessio? Uh, yeah, it's techless uh, everywhere with a three instead of the he. Audrey? Yeah, you can find me as uh, millennia underscore minis on Instagram. And I wish you all very happy and safe holidays. You can catch David on Reddit and on the various discords under Captain Yar with three R's. And you can catch myself uh, under Fenpaints at Instagram and have a great time. Everybody say goodbye. Bye. Happy holiday. Bye. 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 Thank you.